Hey, Ali, I'm Alex. It's nice to meet you. I'm an AI recruiter at Warp, and I'll be interviewing you today for our data scientist position. How are you doing today? Hi, Alex. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. So just to kick things off, our headquarters are based here in San Francisco. Just to confirm, are you interested in working in San Francisco? Yes, I am. Great to hear. And for this position, we're looking for people that are able to start immediately. Does that align with your timeline? Yes, that's perfect. Awesome. Now let's get into some technical questions. In this role, you'll be working in Python. Can you walk me through some common data science libraries you've worked with in Python? Maybe share any specific projects you've completed using them? Of course. Um, yeah, I use NumPy and Pandas for data manipulation and analysis, and I use it frequently to clean, aggregate, and pre-process data. I use Scikit-learn for implementing machine learning algorithms such as classification, regression, and clustering. I've used this library in a predictive modeling project to fine tune random forest and logistic re regression models. I have also used TensorFlow and PyTorch for building deep learning models. So for example, I worked on a project where I built a neural network to classify images for a healthcare application, and I used TensorFlow to optimize hyperparameters and to improve the model accuracy. And typically for data visualization, I work with Matplotlib. That sounds like a solid range of experience. Can you tell me a bit more about the predictive modeling project you mentioned? What was the goal of the project? And how did you go about fine tuning the random forest and logistic regression models? Of course. So the predictive modeling project I mentioned was for marketing and the goal of the project was to predict customer churn. And for fine tuning, um, for the random forest, I tuned the hyperparameters of the model, uh, such as number of trees, max depth, minimum samples per split. And I tuned these hyperparameters until I settled on a model with the optimal performance. That's really interesting. It sounds like you had a hands-on approach to model optimization. How did you evaluate the performance of your models after fine tuning? What metrics did you use to determine their effectiveness? I looked at the model accuracy and precision, and I also evaluated the confusion matrix to identify whether the model was biased toward predicting a certain outcome. Great approach. Evaluating accuracy, precision, and using a confusion matrix gives you a well-rounded view of model performance. Now, let's say you're working on a regression problem with a bunch of variables, and you want to figure out which variables are most effective for prediction. What feature selection methods could you use to select the right variables? So for feature selection, I would typically use several methods depending on the characteristics of the data. So first, I would use correlation analysis to check for correlations between the target variable and independent variables, and I would prioritize variables with high correlation. Um, I also could use recursive feature elimination for linear regression or random forest models to iter iteratively remove the least important features and then rank them based on their importance to the model's predictive accuracy. Um, and then if the data set has many correlated variables, I would use principal component analysis to reduce the dimensionality while also preserving the most critical variance in the data. And this method would also help improve the interpretability of the model and its performance. And combining some of these feature selection methods allows me to you know, identify the most predictive features and reduce overfitting and optimize the model's performance. So typically, I would just combine those features. That's a comprehensive answer. It sounds like you've got a solid grasp on feature selection techniques. Now, can you explain the curse of dimensionality and how it affects machine learning models? Yes. So the curse of dimensionality refers to the problems that occur when the number of features in a data set increases. 
So as the dimensionality increases, the data becomes more sparse in the feature space. And this can affect machine learning models in a few ways through overfitting, because with more dimensions, the model may find patterns that don't truly represent the data structure, which leads to poor generalization for new data. Um, through increased computational cost, because high dimensional data requires more memory and processing power, which slows down the model training and prediction times. And through a sparsity of data, because the amount of data required to properly capture patterns and relationships increases as the number of dimensions increases, which makes it harder to achieve good model performance without a massive data set. That's a really clear explanation. You've covered the key points about the curse of dimensionality very well. Now, moving on to another concept. What is a p-value and what does it tell you about your data? That's a great question. Um, a p-value is a measure used in hypothesis testing to determine the statistical significance of your results. And it represents the probability of obtaining results as extreme as the observed ones, assuming the null hypothesis is true. So a low p-value is typically less than 0.05, and this indicates that there is strong evidence against the null hypothesis and that your findings are statistically significant. And a high p-value is typically greater than 0.05 and implies that the effect or difference you're testing for is not statistically significant. Um, and p-values should always be interpreted carefully and can be considered along with confidence intervals and effect sizes to make better inferences. That's a solid explanation of p-values. It's great to see you emphasize the importance of careful interpretation. Do you have any questions for me about the role or the company? No, I don't have any questions. All right, well, those are all of the questions I had for today. I'll write up my feedback and share it with the hiring manager. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me over email. Thanks and have a great rest of your day.